dude, those are some nice looking design, you see? This is like timeless. This one was used by Diana. This is her Mercedes? That's actually kind of a big deal. Princess Diana? Was this her actual Mercedes? Yes. This one. Yeah. So if you've ever seen the Pope, like riding in a car with bulletproof glass waving to people, he had a G-Wagon, and this is what it looks like. They see me rolling. 135 million euro car. There's only two in the world. Got the Eagle Doors too. 300 Cabriolet. I actually do have a pain in my heart right now because there's so much interesting information. And not only can I not comprehend and read everything, but I can't share everything. So again, I would just tell you, come here. Imagine everyone's walking or using horses and you just roll up to the party in one of these things. Did you guys know? that Wilhelm Konrad, Konrad Röntgen invented the x-ray? That's German. That's your ancestors. Germany invented the car and the x-ray and the book? Come on guys, we gotta continue this, this trend of doing sick things in the world. Bro, Germany has invented so many cool things. The Germans need to be proud of that. Because I'm proud of that for you guys. Bro, check out these elevators. Like even the elevators have a cool design. It's like futuristic. One of the worst inventions of all time. Wait for it. Bruh. You know how much money this is taken from me? You know how much money I paid because of that? <laughs> Alright, today we're at the Mercedes-Benz Arena. No, we're at the Mercedes. We're right next to the former Mercedes-Benz Arena at the Mercedes-Benz Museum. And since I came to Stuttgart in 2017, people have told me you have to go to this museum. So today I'm here with Vincent, and we're gonna check it out for the first time. This is my very first time. And if you'd like to see the video, come along for the ride. Right now we're in the parking structure, and they already have like super old Mercedes that you can check out. Look at this, man. 1934 Mercedes-Benz Cabrio Limousine. So they have like cars in boxes. There's one there. There's one there. And we're gonna go inside and check it out. Los Kids! Oh dang, bro. Automatic. Automatic. Okay, what is this here? Is this... So we're inside. This is the cafe. Sehr cool. All right, we're gonna cut the camera real quick. All right, y'all. Right here is the museum. No. <laughs> <laughs> I, I meant to say this is the dealership. <laughs> Dang it, the frick. Oh, man. <laughs> right here, they actually have a Mercedes-Benz dealership on the same property as the museum. So, right past this Mercedes-Benz star, is the museum and I'll show you from the front. It's a really nice building. And then what are these cars? Are these like rentals? I don't know. I think it's uh, parking for the dealership. Okay, yeah. I'm assuming all the people that work at Mercedes-Benz have a nice car. Yes, and uh, the stadium, Amhapa Arena, is like just on this street to the left right there where Stuttgart plays. And this is the beautiful designed, beautifully designed museum. I've seen this ever since I came to um, Stuttgart. I've always driven by this and thought that it's a really nicely uh, designed building. It looks beautiful, but I've never been inside. Okay, just for the sake of direction orientation, like I said, this is the museum and that's the stadium. You can see it. You can see the top of it. Like right there, you see that top? That's where Stuttgart plays. And then the city of Stuttgart, like this is Bad Cannstatt. And if you drive down or take the U-Bahn this way and to the left, like Stuttgart city center is more this way. And today, we're about to be inside there. Boom! Check that out, Mercedes-Benz Museum. They got a nice fountain too. Yep. That's what we're doing today. If you work for Mercedes and you know somebody that has to do with the marketing team, <laughs> I, was, I, I had this idea. And I don't know if it's a good idea, but if you think it is, maybe we can make a deal. What if I took a car and did a tour of Germany 
it's like a Bundesliga Germany tour. So I go to like the biggest stadiums or the biggest rivalry matches in the Bundesliga one and two or even three. Do a city tour and I take a car like a Mercedes or a Porsche around the countryside. I feel like that'd be like a really good combination. Connor with a car around Germany, exploring the cities and doing Bundesliga matches. Anyways, let's check this out. Beautiful. Beautiful design. Okay, I'm excited actually. I'm gonna try to actually take this museum in and learn something and then film when it's necessary, you know? I don't wanna film so much, I wanna like actually learn some things. Okay. Bro, check out these elevators. Like, even the elevators have a cool design. It's like futuristic. All right, so, yeah, look at this. That's really cool, actually. Okay, so, we're in the lobby. This is, this is what it looks like right when you walk in. We came in the front doors, got the tickets. We're in the lobby right now, and those cool elevators that you see, we're actually gonna get in this, go up, and then the museum starts at the very top. It's kind of like history. I think it's the, the start of the history at the very top, and then you walk all the way down and learn about Mercedes-Benz. That's what we're gonna do. You've been here before, right? I've been here. Is that true? Yes, it's, and it's also a lot about like general history. It's not, not just about Mercedes-Benz, but also a lot, a, lot, a lot of like important history points throughout world history. Germany and the whole world. Cool. And, yeah. and it's like how Mercedes fits into world history type thing? Exactly. Cool, all right. And what is this? Is it a cafe? This uh, is the cafe at the end. Like, you see the that staircase that runs down? The very end is yeah, here. And then the very end you can have a coffee. Okay, so at the very end, we're gonna walk down and have a coffee right there. But we're gonna start in the Zug and go all the way up. Okay, cool. Which one should we go? Doesn't matter. Yes, go. <laughs> all right, here we go. Getting in the Zug. Bro, this is sick. It's like futuristic. Is this what you were saying? When you're, like, you're saying the lobby is kind of futuristic? Yeah, it's like built in this Futurama style, I yeah. think it's called. It's like a retro future vibe. I feel it. Like it's a mixture of modern, like modernity and like a bit retro. Yeah, it, it, it's cool. Okay, look at this. This is what we're gonna be seeing. These are all the levels. How many levels are there? Uh, I think I don't I don't even know to be honest. <laughs> I think like five or six, maybe seven, with the yeah. with the ground floor and the and the uh, the basement. Cool man, this is sick. They, they have airplanes too. Uh, yeah, we did uh, airplane engines. Let's go. Because that's the reason for the three, three pointed star. It's like air, water, and land. That's the reason for the three Dude, that's a fact I didn't know, and that's interesting. Really? Yeah. Air, water, land? Yeah. Alright, y'all. We've already learned something new. If you didn't know, anytime you look at a Mercedes, air, water, land. Is air on top? Yeah. Air, and then right is water? Uh, I'm not sure. Okay, water. okay. <laughs> air, water, and land. Water, land is either left or right. Okay, Vince has been here before, so you're gonna kinda help me out. I didn't get the audio guide because I have a personal guide here. What is this? The horse. This is basically like the horse, like uh, how it all started. It was like the way of transportation back then, because you only had the horse or the train. Right. Or the horse carriage, of course. Uh -huh. But there wasn't a car before Carl Benz invented the car. Not and Carl's be Carl Benz did invent the car. He did. So yeah. for you Americans that think it was Henry Ford, this is not right. Carl Benz Carl invented Benz. the car. Mercedes invented the car. Henry Ford invented the production line. Yeah, he, that made he the invented car like mass production, basically. Okay. The, the Model T made uh, mass production. Okay. Available. Cool. And the quote is, "I do believe in the horse. The automobile is no more than a transitory phenomenon." That's basically somebody that didn't think the car would it was even. Kaiser Wilhelm. So it, it wasn't just some guy. It was, it was basically like the emperor of the. Of the country. He didn't the, believe in the car. He didn't believe in the car because he loved horses and he said like the, the horse is gonna be the way to go and the car is just gonna be like this. A fad. A novum, you know, like yeah. a fad. Yeah, it's gonna fade it's away. It's gonna go out of style. And it's, yeah, it's not practical. That, 
is a what was I gonna say? He then later uh, actually changed his opinion and he liked Mercedes. Okay. That was like way After later. it was proven. Yeah, it was like way later. This is a shout out to those people that have dreams. Some people, even the king themselves, important people, they're gonna be like, nah, it's not gonna work. But if you believe inside, you gotta go for it, like Carl Benz, and then people will believe once it works. Okay? Well, maybe let's go. Ah, oh, okay. This is just. Um, it's like a little waiting room. You, 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 can, uh, you should look like at the building itself. There's like a huge video about the building itself. And there's uh, there's uh, like a platform that they can lower, uh -huh. and then they can lift up cars to the certain uh, levels of the museum. Really? So they can drive in and out uh, the cars at like, different levels. So they can lift it up like to, to yeah, this there's, station? There's like a platform that they can uh, drop from the ceiling. Mm -hmm. Basically like with a, it's like a huge crane. And is this the center of the museum? Because it like it kind of is shaped like a star, right? Uh, and it's shaped like a Mercedes-Benz star. That's true. I've never, <laughs> never even realized it yet. <laughs> nice, bro. We're learning new things. Seven hour walking tour. <laughs> Yo, okay. So this is the very, f dude, that's no, the, so the left crazy. One, the three wheel. The three wheel one is the uh, uh, first design. Patent wagen, motor patent wagen. It's like the first car that car Benz uh, built. Dude, are we allowed to walk on this? No. Um, Probably not. Dude. All right, before, before I explain anything, I just want you to see it. Look at this, bro. That says Daimler Motorcoach on Benz Patent Motorwagen, Axel 186. So this is the very first one. Yes. They were like rivals, and the, they invented it at almost the same time, but our Benz was a bit earlier. So Daimler and Benz were making. They were at, at the, the same beginning. Time. They were uh, rival companies, yeah. and then later they joined they, forces. They joined forces. Yeah. Crazy. 1886. This is like the first car or motor wagon. Exactly. And Carl Benz had like a permit to drive it around in Mannheim. That's where he lived. And the uh, sales were not that good because people were quite afraid of it. Mm. They called it like witchcraft. Because it was a horseless carriage. Yeah, right. They said like basically it's like driven by. I thought it was black magic. magic. Yeah, right. And it's evil. It's loud and it stinks. And sales were really rough. And Carl Benz was starting to like have some financial struggles, difficulties. Yeah. Difficulties. And then in 1888, his wife wanted to prove to the world that the car was capable of doing the trip, like long distance trip. Mm. And then she did a trip from Mannheim to visit her mother in Pforzheim. Okay. It's like a 106 kilometers trip. And she took her two sons, they were uh, Eugen and Richard, I think. They were 13 and 15 years old. And they woke up early in the morning, pushed the carriage out of the shop of Carl, so that he doesn't wake up. They didn't tell Carl about this. And then the, the wife, Bertha Benz, she just basically drove off. She didn't plan anything. She just she just went for it. And uh, on the way... In this one? In this one, yeah. In 1888. Really? And So she was like the first one to like test the durability yeah, type exactly. thing? Yeah, exactly. Because until then... Shout Carl, out Bertha. Carl wasn't really confident enough that it did like long trips. He only yeah. drove around like on even ground, like on, in Mannheim. Like on easy terrain. So was Berta trying to like encourage him in, was, in a way? He was trying to prove the world that it's possible to go on a long journey in an automobile. So we have Berta to thank for yeah. Mercedes in a way. And on the way she broke down twice. Okay. Or actually, I think three times. One, uh, she, she ran out of fuel and then she had to go to the pharmacy and buy, it was called Leakroin back then because they didn't have, they didn't have petrol stations so they didn't have fuel. Yeah. But Leakroin was like a, a solvent to wash clothes. Mm -hmm. In Germany it's called Waschbenzin. Okay. So it's like if you have a stain in your, in your dress, you could buy Ligroin and then you could like try to clean it. And that was basically what powered the vehicle. 
So the first uh, gas sta station in the world was in Wiesloch. It was a pharmacy. And first she, gas she, station ever? Yeah. Do they have a museum there? It's, I think the, uh, the we gotta go there. still exists in Wiesloch. Yeah. And you can still visit it. And it's basically the first gas station in the world because she bought 10 liters of Vigoran from the pharmacist. To Crazy. Get, get to like, finish the trip. And then her carburetor uh, got clogged. Okay. Or, or a fuel line. And she had like a hat needle. It's uh, basically it's like a, lead, a needle that holds your hat to your hair so it doesn't fly off. Okay, makes sense. And she used the needle to clean the fuel line and the carburetor. And um, her ignition, um, the isolation failed. So she had to take a, was it, is it called garret or gar garnet? Uh, like stockings? Yeah. Like, like a piece of her cloth? Yeah, she had to take a piece of her uh, stockings. stockings. To wrap it around to make an isolation, so the the spark didn't uh, so the spark uh, reached the spark plug again. Crazy. Because the isolation was going bad. So Bertha Benz was a beast. And then after 106 <laughs> kilometers, and I think 12 hours, she arrived in Potsdam, and she wanted to visit her mother, but as she arrived, her mother was on vacation. <laughs> so the whole trip was, um, yeah. Not pointless, but her mother was on vacation. It had a bigger so, purpose to prove to Carl yeah. that he can do but it. But they stayed uh, three days in uh, Potsdam, and then they gave free rides for all the people. Yeah. And then the people brought a lead groin as like uh, a fee to get a ride. Really? Yeah. So they all brought le their little because lead groin was the, it was like a washing dissolvent, so. No one had like huge quantities of yeah. it, like only like small quantities. So they would pour it in the engine and... Yeah, and everyone who's like, if you have Lee Grand, you can get a free ride. Nice. So uh, the, the son, he drove around the people for I think two or three days. And then after two or three days, um, she, she messaged Carl with uh, a telegram mm. and said, you know, I'm in Pforzheim, I arrived at my mother, it's all going well. And then after two or three days, they drove back the whole way. And uh, Bertha Benz was actually like really uh, wise in technology. She wasn't just the wife of Carl Benz. She yeah. wasn't just the wife of the inventor. She was actually really involved in the development and uh, the research of the car. So she had like a, a lot of technological knowledge. Yeah. She knew a lot about the car. And uh, she complained when she got home that her sons had to push uphill because mm. the gear was too long first gear so then Carl made a, a shorter gear for like hills okay so they didn't have to push so Berta was like a really big she was deal really, she was a, like a really big inventor yeah. okay but as a as a married wife you weren't allowed to be written into the uh, patent really back then yeah because it was illegal so only Carl Benz Dang. the credit so we're gonna give her credit now shout yeah. out shout out Berta also if you're gonna date someone and get married, date somebody like Berta who will help build something. I guess Carl and Berta together, like they built a beautiful thing together. So it's good to be with somebody that not only can help you, but will encourage you and vice versa. Well, maybe let's go. This is Carl Benz. This is Gottlieb Daimler. And this is Wilhelm Maybach. And if you didn't know, like I didn't know, look at this, bro. It says, Carl Benz, Gottlieb Daimler, and Wilhelm Maybach were the inventors of the automobile. In 1885, they laid the crucial foundations for individual mobi mobility by building the first gasoline engines. Benz built it in Mannheim, and Daimler together with Maybach in Cannstatt. Bro, right here. Like, this is where they were building the first gasoline engine, which was the precursor for all the cars that we drive around today including probably airplanes. Carl Benz completed his patent motor car in 1886, while Gottlieb, Daimler, and Wilhelm Maybach motorized a carriage. This ushered in the advance of the automobile and its inventors. Daimler and Benz founded their own companies, which subsequently expanded and became competitors. And although the two, and although the two inventors lived and worked just 60 miles apart, they never got to know each other. Okay, anyways, I wanted to say this too. Bro, Germany has invented so many cool things. The Germans need to be proud of that. Because I'm proud of that for you guys. It's really sick. We're still on the first level. There's actually too much information to even explain, so I would recommend that you guys come here yourself, but I'm just gonna share the things that kind of get me going. I read this, 
and I want to read it to you because I think it's important. Before the advent of the automobile, people traveled by ship, train, bicycle, horse, and cart, or horse-drawn carriage, all of which pe changed people's relationship with space and time with lasting effect. It's crazy because like every invention does change people's life. On water, the paddle steamer revolutionized transport because it was capable of negotiating rivers in both directions under its own power. On land, the railways enabled people from all social classes to travel long distances for the first time, linking villages with metropolises and regions. The bicycle went a long way towards boosting private transport in the 1870s, but riding bikes, even ordinary people were able to expand their sphere of life with lasting effect. So basically, what I wanted to say is like, all these new inventions that people come up with, they change people's lives, not just their own. It's like, he had a, a vision in, in his mind that he wanted to create this thing, and then look, from that one invention, with a few people, absolutely revol revolutionized the entire world. And I think that that is really cool. So basically this room is talking about the history of the people that invented this engine and world history in general up to the point of the invention of the engine. And then now we're gonna go on and learn more about the car, I think. What is this one again? This is the first engine? Um, so it's a Deutz gas engine. So it was basically used to power whatever you needed. Like if you had like a workshop or if you had like a big mill, or yeah. it was used for various things. Okay. So you could first power, gas motor. You could power anything you want. And then the first engine was technically 1886, right? Uh, it was the grand clock in 1886. Yeah. First automobile, gas, 1886. Yeah. yeah. On January 29th, 1886, Carl Benz filed a patent for the most important invention invention, a three-wheeled vehicle in Mannheim. Shout out Mannheim. This is one of the first gas engines, and once they had it, they were testing it out on a lot of things, like this bicycle right here, like this railway car, and this boat. Did they work? Yeah, like did it, it work to propel the boat? And they even tried it on this like flying machine. Yeah, so look at this thing. This is an airship that looks like this, and by reading the plaque, I learned that with this airship, using the grandfather clock um, engine, which is what they called it, because it kind of looked like a grandfather clock, when they put that on this airship, it says on the plaque that they conquered the third element, which is the star, air, land, water, because they used the same engine uh, to power this boat. So they conquered water with the engine, they conquered land with the engine, and they conquered air with the engine. Mercedes-Benz star. Fact of the day, sick as frick. Look at that, look at that, look at that. Yeah, what I was trying to say before is, is like, if you have an idea of something that you wanna do, even if people don't believe in it or it doesn't work the first time, I encourage you to do it because it could lead to something beautiful and if it doesn't work, you're gonna learn something that will help you build something better in the future. And also, get a friend or a wife like Bertha that will support you and encourage you. And also a friend like Maybach and Daimler. Vincent also told me that um, Benz, was it Benz? He was a, he was a horrible businessman? Well, not horrible, but he was struggling with finances all his life. Yeah, so Benz wasn't really the best with finances, but he was a really good inventor. And I've been learning that for myself, is like, you can't do everything the best. That's why companies exist, where you hire someone or you work with somebody that's good at finances, then you can be the inventor and you can hire someone that's good at marketing, stuff like that. That's why companies like Mercedes or any of the big companies, they hire so many people that are specialized in a certain thing. So I think it's also good that you find your strength, triple down on that, and then work with people that are better at the things that you're not good at. And I'm saying that right now in this video because I need to learn that. I'm better at exploring than I am at finances as well, so that's good to know. <laughs> Alright, this is the first four-wheel automobile. And right here, is the first one with fenders? It was the first one by Carl Benz, the first four-wheel. So these fenders though is the first time they use them, right? To protect from like the, the mud and the poop? Yeah. <laughs> and in, in German, what do they name these things? Kotflügel. Which means? Uh, Dung or poop wing, basically. <laughs> <laughs> because in the olden days, like when it would get really wet on the roads and they'd ride, it'd have mud and like horse poo that would fly up, so they, they put the fenders there. And it's funny though, because in German it's called der 
der Kotflügel. And then the translation is Fender. Uh, until this day, it's still called Kotflügel. Yeah. yeah, in German. Yeah. In English, they have Fender. That's why it's cool to learn both languages because, like, Fender doesn't have the same meaning as Kotflügel. Kotflügel. And when you know what it means, it's just better. I don't know. I think it's kind of cool. What does Fender mean? Fender? Yeah. Fender means like that thing. It's like specifically yeah, for that, that thing. I thought it had like a, another meaning. No, I don't think so. Fender? Look at these. It looks like a child's I know. Okay, guys. I'm sorry, this video is more gonna be about like me exploring and sharing random facts than like actually learning the history of the cars in depth and detail. You're gonna have to come here yourself. I would really recommend it. I'm only on the first level and it's already very, very interesting. You could spend hours here, I already know it. Because we've already been here for like an hour on the first level and there's six or seven levels. This is like the first bus or coach carrying passengers. Zoom out and then further down, See this little uh, truck right here? This is like the first like El Cave. <laughs> Not really El Cave, but like uh, what would you call it? It was a truck. A truck. Okay, the first truck. first truck. This is the first truck. And guess what they used it for in Germany in the beginning? The breweries would buy beer and they put all the kegs on top. That was one of the first usage usages. And as with anything, when you first invent it and no one believes in it. It's kind of slow, but then once it's proven, it's just like boom, boom, boom. Just like making so many different variations for so many different things. And as you know now, Mercedes-Benz is making cars, trucks, engines for airplanes, like all around the world, so. All right, so right here on the wall is like German world history almost. And then we're gonna swing over into some of the first and most majestic German cars ever made. I kind of regret that I can't say every single thing that I read because it is very, very interesting. But this video will have to do for you. Yeah, I can do like two or three parts. So. Part one, <laughs> 10 hours. <laughs> Did you guys know that Wilhelm Konrad, Konrad Rundkin invented the X ray? That's German, that's your ancestors. That's sick as frick. Germany invented the car and the x-ray and the book. Come on guys, we gotta continue this, this trend of doing sick things in the world. I think uh, there's a lot of people around the world that have done really cool things. People from America as well, Ireland, Africa, Asia. But Germany has done some like pretty significant things and I like learning about that. I just learned about Rundkin right here. The x-ray is named after Carl Rundkin. Albert Einstein is from here too, by the way. And so is my great-grandmother. This is actually a very interesting fact for people that love Mercedes or want to know the history of the car. Mercedes is actually the name of the daughter of one of the former... Big customers. Big customers. <laughs> Mercedes, is, <laughs> Mercedes is actually the name of the daughter of one of the former customers of Daimler Motoren Gesellschaft. And let me just read this to you so you get it directly from Mercedes. It says one of the first gentleman drivers which were customers that drove themselves instead of having a chauffeur. So one of the first customers, gentleman drivers, was Emil Jelenik, a businessman who lived in Vienna and Nice. Initially a customer of Daimler Motoren Gesellschaft or DMG from 1898 on, from 1898 on he sold the company's vehicles. I can't even read English. Basically, Jelinek wanted to prove the quality of the cars in races. He pressured DMG chief engineer Wilhelm Maybach to build a new automobile with an especially powerful engine, and it was to bear the name of Jelinek's daughter, Mercedes. So once he was victorious in his... Dang it, bro. I don't know how to make YouTube videos. I'm talking too much. But it's just crazy how Mercedes is the name of a daughter of a former customer. That's how they got the name, Mercedes. And that, that name is the most famous throughout the entire world. Like Daimler, I didn't know about Daimler until I came to Germany. In America, everybody knows it as Mer Mercedes. But the real pronunciation is... Mercedes. Mercedes. Mercedes is the name of somebody's daughter that used to buy the cars. That's basically what I wanted to tell you. 
Okay, so that guy I was talking about that wanted his car named after his daughter, he used it for racing, and then I'm standing in front of a sign that was talking about how DMG or Daimler Motoren Gesellschaft became more popular with the um, because the cars that they were making were successful in races. So like, just like, um, what do they call it? The, the races now? Formula One. For, yeah, Formula One and... DTM. Yeah. But like, Touring, Touring Wagen Meisterschaft. Yeah, so, so Formula One and uh, DTM in Germany is a, and also soccer, and branding with sports is a big reason why these companies have risen in their success. So that being said, I think it'd be great if you could sponsor a YouTuber to travel Germany and go to sports events in your car. Just one million dollars. These are some of the uh, original logos. You can see Benz there with a wreath, wreath around it. And you can also see Daimler, Mercedes. Unter Türkheim. Nice. And then later they were combined like with the wreath and the star. Okay, then look at this press. Yeah, these are like presses that make some of the... I think you can see it. Hopefully you can see it. Benz. There we go. Benz with the wreath. Just the wreath. Yeah, look at that. There's the star. And like I said before... Here we go, right here. Daimler's endeavors on behalf of universal motorization on land on water and in the air. Air, land, water. Did you know that Otto van Bismarck, in order to protect people from illness, accident, disability, or old age, invented welfare? What else did Germans invent? Yesterday you told me. I don't want to make false accusations, but we did invent a lot of things, like the, uh, the vinyl player. Like a record player? Yeah, record player. Really? Yeah, um, hmm. I think the radio and the TV. Radio and the TV were invented by Germans? I'm not sure about that. Don't cancel Don't me. Don't me. <laughs> Don't kill me, but... That's crazy. And the bra. <laughs> you know what my... You know what my... Uh, my theory is... I feel like Germany... Really, really, really benefited from the... Um, the invention of the book. Because I feel like the invention of the book was like the first internet. You know what I mean? Like you can spread information so fast. And because that was invented in Germany, so many people started like gaining, gaining information. Or so many people started not only sharing information, but gaining information so fast. So they read so much and learned so much that they were able to invent a lot of cool things. That's just my theory. Do you have a different one? Comment below. <laughs> okay, so look, this is, uh, this is the second floor. And then I also wanted to give you a view of VfB Stuttgart training right here. The, uh, the Weinberg, the Autobahn, and then MHP Arena. Look. Look at this, bro. You can see, this is VfB Stuttgart. I think that's their, their number one team. And then it looks like the VfB Stuttgart Frauen and the MHP Arena right here. And then in the, in the distance, there's the, the wineries. Really sick. And then this is like second row. So I'll, I'll show you. I'm gonna walk up to these cars right here. These are like some of the first limousine style Mercedes um, cars. And it, as you can see, back in the day, um, and Vincent was also telling me, like the people that own these things were like royalty. It's almost the equivalent of owning a private jet today. Like if you had one of these, it's like you were at that level where today you would own a private jet. Back then, because jets weren't invented yet, you would just have a nice Mercedes cabin car. Check these things out. Yeah, like these things look expensive. Imagine everyone's walking or using horses and you just roll up to the party in one of these things. Beautiful though. Like, look at this metal and make these leather seats. Fresh. Yeah, it's, it's really nice. And then, as we were talking about, the racing. 
This is a map in Nice, France, showing one of the hill climb races that Mercedes-Benz was successful in, right near Monaco. Okay, I have a, a question, recommendation. Can Mercedes please remake some of these old cars, but like using modern day suspension, I guess? Because that would be so cool to drive around town in something looking like that. I personally think that these types of cars, the old style, sometimes has a better vibe than like the new, like driving around like a new Maybach, you know? I think driving around in that, rolling up to like Bad Cannstatt for the Valve B game, in that, that'd be sick. In Lederhosen and a freaking 1900 Mercedes. Just a request. All right, they're saying that this thing right here is the oldest Mercedes still in existence. And look at those lanterns, it's like, that's not an electric light. It's like literally like a flame as your uh, guiding light on the road. You see that old horn right there? You gotta like say, print, print. watch out, my G's. I'm in this G-Wagon. Okay, look at this bus, bro. That is a stylish bus. We need to bring these back. That's a design and a half right there. Bring that back for sure. Okay, so now we're, oh, look at the view, bro. Check out the view, Kanstadt, and Stuttgart is like somewhere over there. And now we're in the, uh, what is this called? Uh, the Gallery of <laughs> Voyages, so it's like buses and GT cars. Cars that you use to travel with? Yeah, exactly. All right, cool, yeah, that's what it says on the wall. Gallery of Voyages. Man, I'm, I'm serious, I regret that I can't share everything, but I hope you get a little bit of an idea of this museum and some of the cars because it's so cool. Look at this, man. Check out this bus. Buenos Aires, Argentina. That's insane. I'm gonna do a little... Okay, that's a nice little van to travel in. Marco Polo. All right. I'm gonna not read as much right now. I'm just gonna show you the cars on this level. Check that out. This is a dope bus right here. A little travel car. Check that out. And these are some of the new, the new big buses they use for the sports teams and travel companies. However, the style on that is impeccable. Look at that, London. I think it's saying that it's from London. Mines Diamond double-decker buses saw use in London from 1904 on. Oh, well check this one out right there. That's a cool drop top. Drop top Mercedes triple logoed. Un, do, trois. And this is like an older one. These look pretty. Uh, they look almost like the ones they use now. Oh. That's like a mob boss car right there. All right, this is why I like traveling with cars and motorcycles when I go to new places, because look at this. Unlike the railway passenger, a car driver determined his own route. This meant that drivers were obliged to develop a sense of direction as well as map reading skills. When you travel without a plan and you have like your own car or your own motorcycle or just like a Deutsche Bahn ticket and then you use your feet, you can determine your own route and find things that wouldn't necessarily be on Google. I like that type of thing. All right, and also some additional information about this car will be provided by Vincent. What's the additional information? <laughs> Sleek version? Well, there was a normal version and a streamlined version, and the streamlined version was like an upgrade you could get, but it costs... Double. Uh, almost double, like, or, like an insane amount to upgrade to the streamlined version. 
But the Streamland version looks way cooler. Check it out. It's like Cuella de Vil, you know? Zoom. Zoom. You know what I'm saying? And this here is the Pullman. The Pullman is still, it's named Pullman as well today. Yeah. Like the. It's always the long version. The like long version like of any car. Stretched. Like there's a long version of the S Class, and then there's like the stretch limousine version, like an even longer version. Or the, there's, it's a long version, then the Maybach, and then the very, Pullman. very long version is like the Pullman. Okay. And this was the first one. I think one of the first Pullmans. Sick. This is the old Marco Polo. You have like the. The roof, which can like tilt up, mm -hmm. and you have a bed in there. Bro, that's and you could get it with like a little kitchen and. So this is like the Marco Polo line of Mercedes Benz, and I didn't know that until today that the Marco Polo is a travel version, which makes sense because Marco Polo was a famous traveler. But that would be perfect to take a road trip around Germany, sleep in the car, go to all the soccer games in small towns, and just film videos 24/7. Mercedes Benz. What do you say? Good advertising. I'll be the modern day Marco Polo and go everywhere in Europe. Hey, what is this, by the way? Is this, this a is testing track? This is the plant of Untertuka. Okay. Like all of this is Mercedes. And this is like a circle testing track. So they just ride around, yeah, yeah, yeah. test the car. You can test uh, whatever you like. Yeah, so this is one of the biggest plants. Look, all of this Untertuka is basically Mercedes Benz. And there's a little test track right there. It's crazy how you can see better when you move. And then, yeah, it's definitely because of those dots, but it's just crazy how like movement allows better vision. Just like in life, when you move and you do stuff, you can see better than when you're just sitting there. I don't know why that makes sense, but it does. This one is sick. The Mercedes-Benz 300 SEL 6.3 came out in 1968. <laughs> bro, this is insane. Like, look at this, bro. All of this came because somebody had an idea, you know what I'm saying? And in the beginning, they were like, nah. Like, the King Wilhelm was like, that's, that's stupid. And then he probably drove in one of these after that. Again, go for the things you think you should. It'll probably work. What were you gonna say? Like here you can see the logo combined. Ah, okay. The star and the combined logo. Was the wreath from the wreath, yeah. the wreath was from who? Uh, Benz. Daimler. Did you know that there was a guy with the last name Diesel and he was German and that's why they called the diesel engine Diesel. Another thing that Germans invented. All right, so on the wall here. We have world history, world history paired with the history of Mercedes-Benz. Some of the airplane engines, engines that they made. Talks about Charles Lindbergh, transag transatlantic flight. Sorry, my speech is not so good right now. Gandhi, and th this also talks about after World War I when they weren't allowed to make engines for cars or planes anymore. They started to develop bicycles. And I think they made over 25,000 of those. Airplane engines there. The Hindenburg. I also like how this museum doesn't shy away from the, uh, the World War II era. It talks about in detail how um, Mercedes-Benz was involved in the war effort, building planes and building cars. And I'm not gonna elaborate on all of those things right now because there's so much information and you gotta Google it yourself. But let's walk through the, the showroom. I'll show you some of these cars. Really cool design. Look at this. I love this color right there, the greens. This is one of the sedans right here. 
Kurvenwagen. Check that out. And then look at this design right here. Beautiful red, white wall. Leather interior. Check out this showroom right here. Some of these trucks right here. Oil tank truck. Diesel. I like this is a nice design right here. We should bring these back guys. I think we gotta bring some of these designs back. Like that one for sure. Look at that. This is the Rennwagen Schnelltransporter. High speed racing car transporter right there. And that is a beautiful car. Look at that one. Amen. It's a good design. Winner of the 1955 World Championship for the sports car. The transporter has the same race engine as the race car. Oh yeah, look. Max speed, 105. This car has never been beaten nor dropped out owing to mechanical failure. Check out these designs too. That's a nice one, bro. That would be a perfect design for camping, like sleeping in your car. Oof. Look at this one. Long nose. Diesel. And this auto transporter. What's the most interesting thing on this floor? Or one of the one of the cool facts that you know? This bus is really cool. It's like it used to be like a mobile post office from Austria. Mobile post office. Yeah. Look at that. Österreichische Post. Mobile post. So people would like wait in line and yeah. so they send would, their like, mail. Travel through like rural rural areas. And then uh, people could pick up their, their posts, or like their packages. In or the send. Or, yeah, probably also Mobile send. post office. I never yeah. have heard of that in my life. <laughs> they should do that more. They should do that now. Come on, guys. we got to bring back the old times. That's cool. Yeah, so they would have a, a post lady, postman in there. Wait in line. Send your post. That's an interesting fact. Thank you. For some reason, I like the look of this. A beautiful design. If you're on this floor, you can take a shortcut and go back to the floor above and then walk back down. I just think it looks really cool, the color and everything. So next level. Okay, here's another wall of history that we're walking by. Unfortunately, I can't share everything. I actually do have a pain in my heart right now because there's so much interesting information. And not only can I not comprehend and read everything, but I can't share everything. So again, I would just tell you, come here. The museum is, it's beautiful. And can you share the information that you told me about the Silver Arrows? Yeah, so the uh, race cars of Mercedes, they used to be white. But first, back in the day. First, tell me, the, the name Silver Arrow is still used today for yeah. race cars? Silberfire. So it translates to Silver Arrow. So like and all German race cars are, are no, Silberfire? No, all the Mercedes. All the German Mercedes, uh, the Mercedes race, cars race cars are Silver are Arrows. basically still called the Silver Arrows. At least the Formula cars. Okay. The DTM, not really. 
but the Formula cars, they're still called Silver Arrow. Cars. And why? Uh, there used to be like a rule that your car had to be a certain weight and not above that weight. And uh, one race, Mercedes was above just a, like one kilogram or like a tiny amount. But they couldn't strip anything from the car because it was a race car. Mm -hmm. So they uh, removed the paint overnight and then to it's like bare metal and then the metal was silver. And that's how they got their name in the race, the Silver Arrow. They won? I'm not sure if they won. Probably. Probably, maybe. That's cool but though. That's uh, where the name originates. And that's one of a thousand facts that you're going to learn walking down only one of these little ramps. And there's like seven or eight. So we're going to keep going and check out the Wunde Ya post-war miracle and some beautiful painted cars. Like look at this green one right here. Wunde Ya. Look at that. 300 Cabriolet. Do you know about this one? Maybe I should just walk with you and you just tell all the facts. <laughs> <laughs> you should just be the... I know about the uh, What is this one? What's the... Uh, this was the first car with direct injection. Okay. So, the, this, in this time of age, the carburetor was like the way to go. But uh, when you have direct injection, you have like a higher performance output for the engine because you can dose the fuel way better than a carburetor. A carburetor basically just spits fuel into the engine and then uh, it doesn't uh, distribute it as, as fine as possible. So mm -hmm. the direct inje injection engine is way more uh, geared towards like high performance and back then this was the first production car that used direct injection. So it made it higher performance? Yeah, and it was the fastest car back then. Check that out, dude. Got the Eagle Doors too. It's like a James Bond. This one. This one. Yeah, check these out, bro. Look at this one. That's a 180. Dude. Car lovers paradise right here. For real. 135 million euro car. There's only two in the world. And this is the last one that's like public. So apparently they only made two of these cars and they didn't mass produce them because they stopped racing in 1955 because there was like a disaster. So one of the employees at Mercedes-Benz, his name was Uhlenhaut, he used to drive this to work, right? Yeah, he used to like take it out on the road <laughs> and try to like go the fast. The car had no use because the racing program basically was cancelled. It stopped for a few but years. They had, they had the car anyway, so yeah. he thought, you know what, might as well use it. And now this is the only one still like public, I guess. Yeah, we, had, we had two, but uh, they sold one. sold one. Do you know who, who has it? No. Alright. It says private collector, so. I need to find that guy and go on a ride. If you're the if you're the owner of this car, let's go on a ride and make a little vlog. <laughs> Cause that's a beautiful looking thing right there. Nice. So you see these gold was it the first going door car? I'm not sure about that. Okay, look at these going doors right here. So this, they build it like that? Not for the looks, which I feel like now it's become famous for the looks, but they built it out of necessity because the chassis was like raised. Tubular frame, like if you uh, switch the camera and put back to there. Yeah, so we're looking at the frame of the car is back here. back here. It's made out of triangles, it's tubular, and when it's put in the car bottom, it raises up a little bit. So then because of that reason they had to make the doors like this. Exactly. Because you couldn't put a normal door because the frame was in the way. Okay. And now this has become like iconic for exactly. James Bond movies or something like that. Yeah. <laughs> it's just an uh, all-time classic. Yeah, definitely all-time classic. These, no, 300L? SL? 300 SL. That's a 3 liter inline 6 cylinder. Whoa. That's a legit car right there. And 
Here's the chassis right here. This is what we're looking at. So this is the structure underneath that car, right? Yeah, so here's the door, basically. So you can't open the door, either. or you could open the door, but then there would be the frame in the way. So they put the door in there. There we go, baby. Like you can see it in the bottom. Here. That's what it looks like, the chassis. And that's what it looks like dressed, you know, in flesh. Check these out, man. These are the elevators we're talking about. Beautiful design. And that's where we were. And also where we were up there. The Mercedes Star. All right, let's keep going. Let's keep checking it out. Go to the showroom, number four, something? Five. All right, here we go. These are like my broken wall. Toy cars. Yeah, I know it's like uh, community and service vehicles, basically. Ah, okay. So, so here we go. Mercedes-Benz community service vehicles, like fire trucks, um, ambulances, police cars. Nice location, right on the autobahn. Oh, this is the. Um, that's the plant. Unter Türkheim. That's the Unter Türkheim um, Mercedes plant. Let's check out some of these cars right here. This is an old fire truck right here. Snow vehicle. This is a vehicle like to not only pick up snow but to shoot it off to the side. Check these out. Formula One medical car. Is it a trash truck? Trash truck, fire truck, holy tie. Unimo? Ah, that's right, bro. Okay, so I've actually had the privilege of driving a Unimog. Thank you to Tommy. And Unimog is owned by Mercedes. It developed as its own company back in what city? You know the city of the, the Unimog Museum? It's like in Gaganau. It's Gaganau. So I believe, if I know the history right, which is very small, that in Gaganau, Unimog developed by itself and then it was purchased by Mercedes Benz later. I'm not sure about that. <laughs> I think so. If you know, if you know um, something else about it, you can comment below, please. Check this out. That's a nice one. To my left. Kassenwagen. And then, Rotkreuz, Rotkreuz, and then the stairs back up to the other one. Yeah. Okay. Okay, let me show you something. This is not related to Mercedes, but they have one here, just so you can see it. One of the worst inventions of all time. Wait for it. You know how much money this is taken from me? You know how much money I paid because of that? <laughs> All right, we're coming. This is gonna be safety. Is that what we're doing? Yeah. All right. Going down another ramp, and as is customary to this museum, the history, like world history, and then how Mercedes-Benz fits fits into that history. I really do appreciate that. Because not only is it talking about like the Beatles or Elvis Presley or disco, but then every so often it'll be like, okay, this is how Mercedes-Benz was a part of that time period. And this floor is talking about visionaries. It says safety and the environment. So that's what they're gonna be discussing. I'm not gonna explain it in detail. I'm gonna show you the cars and their beautiful design. And I'm gonna say this again, Mercedes, we gotta bring these back. This design, we have to bring it back because I would buy one and I think a lot of other people would. But anyways, enjoy the beauty. Look at that. That's a Mercedes-Benz 220S. And we got the 320SL right there. It's okay, alles gut. Nice. Colonia Reisen. Fahrzeug ESF 
22. If you, you got any interesting facts? This is the man right here. He knows about cars because he loves them. If you got any interesting facts, let me know. What's what's an interesting fact like? Okay, so the twenty second, thirty second fact. The ESF is an exper experimentalist Sicherheitsfahrzeug, so it's an experimental safety car. Only and for that, they don't sell them. No, it's just like basically like a prototype where they try to present uh, safety innovations. And, and that's this one right here. Yeah, and ideas of the future. So back ah. then, this was like uh, future concept, like. You have like, uh, I think it was like a rubber steering. The airbag hadn't been invented yet. Let's check it out. So you don't hit your head that hard. So this one is specifically for testing. They didn't sell it. People didn't buy it and drive on the roads. So it was like, uh, they wanted to showcase what would be possible in the future in uh, safety wise. Okay. So only like safety features. Nice. And they made, they made an ESF every 10 years or so, so until today. Basically. Is it possible to buy an experimental car? Uh, no, I don't, no, I don't think really. I need to get one of those. <laughs> All the exclusive things. Check, check, check it out. Is this like a for a... Uh... It's good for testing, yeah. So, computers back then were like two. Sorry. Quick one run through. What a bam! Bro, I'm like a kid. Like, you see all the, the little kids running around having school field trips? I feel like that right now. These are the dummies. I heard that these dummies are really expensive because they have um, sensors, like, basically everywhere from head to toe, so that when they put them in the car and do, like, crash tests, then they can tell, like, how much force is hitting the foot or the neck or the arm so that they can like fix the car to protect the person as best as possible. But these are, Is that right? These are like old old ones. They, I think they're only uh, gewichts dummy, so uh, only for... Without they sensors. They only have the weight and they don't really have sensors. Okay. These are like the old ones. The new ones have sensors though. Yeah, exactly. All right, so these are the older ones. If you've ever seen videos of the crash test, they're pretty interesting. You know, if you have social media, you probably have because they ram these cars like at various speeds all the way up to like full speed into walls, right? Yeah, and, and side and versions and into each it's other. It's like specified structures. It's like a honeycomb aluminum uh, block mm. which deforms in the exact manner like every crash. Mm. So you can compare the crashes very easily. But uh, most the companies, they like uh, they do the crashes into uh, like a honeycomb structure. Okay. Or into a fixed barrier. I'll have to see that one day. This used to be, uh, this is like a steam rocket basically. And they use that to propel the crash car. So it, it pushed the crash car from behind with ah, okay. high pressure steam. Yeah. Right here. This is the Bavarian rocket. As you can see, <laughs> the colors of Bavaria, right there. Like you said. Die Heißwasser. Hot water rocket. Rakete. That's right. For the crashing tests. Yada boom. I learned that this cable right here, you see this cable that's connected to the car? It was connected to another car that would actually house a computer. As you can see in there, they have like a computer type system and people would sit there and before before like common era technology, they would have to like relay information about the car and like the driving and the motor. I don't really know everything about it, but frick. What I was trying to explain is that when automobile companies, automobile, automobile companies uh, develop cars, they obviously have to do a lot of research to make sure that the engines and everything is working correctly. And before modern day computers, they had to basically get the data through a wire that was connected to a large computer in that car while this other car was driving. I hope it made sense. If it didn't, use the internet and you can learn a lot more about this or come here yourself, like I said, 700 times. It's amazing, actually. I think this is a really cool museum. Would you consider this museum like one of the best in Germany? Yes, I would say. Yeah. I would say it's definitely in the top 10 of museums. 
I would agree, and I'm only halfway through, but as far as like the information presented and the real life automobiles that you get to see up close and personal, one of the best. Like even that car that was 130 million euros, it's like not in a glass case. I would expect it to be in a glass case. Yeah. Okay, here we go. What, oh, this is the Pope Mobile. So, is this the famous? The gallery of Galerie de Namen. It's the gallery of the names. Of, Galerie of, de Namen. Cars of celebrities. Yeah. Famous people. The translation of Galerie de Namen into English is Gallery of Celebrities. So, yeah, these cars are going to be cars that were used by famous people. Exactly. Who were owned by famous people. Owned by famous people. Okay. It's becoming more sunny. Okay, here we go. And one that Vincent told me about is the Pope Mobile. So if you've ever seen the Pope like riding in a car with bulletproof glass waving to people, he had a G-Wagon and this is what it looks like. So was this actually used by a Pope? Yes. Dang bro. And what is this one? This one was used by Diana. This is her Mercedes? Yo bro. That's actually kind of a big deal. Princess Diana. This is her, was this her actual Mercedes? Yes. This one? Yep. Dang, bro. In December 1991, Princess Diana acquired the Mercedes-Benz 500 SL. The wife of the Prince of Wales thus became the first member of the royal house to drive a foreign car privately. That's interesting. In response to criticism from the government, the trade unions and industry, she returned the comfortable and powerful sports car in 1992. So she owned this very car. And I guess they were trying to make like a political statement by saying like yeah. you can't drive a German car, <laughs> right? Basically, yeah. But it's a good car. A lot of the world, dude. The Pope drives a Mercedes. <laughs> Look at that, Diana's red Mercedes. Okay, if you guys are interested, I want to give you a better view of it. Yeah. So that is her actual Mercedes. This is a. Photo of her with that car right there. Look at that. Is it the same license plate? This is J548 LRP. There it is. Confirmed. Hope Mobile. Dude, with the, the gold rims. 24 karat gold rims. This is why you have to visit the museum and read these plaques for yourself. There's too many for me to explain, but this is a very interesting one. Look, the Pope Mobile is perhaps the most famous Mercedes belonging to a VIP. It was built in 1980 for the visit of Pope John Paul to Germany to protect the Pope from wind and the rain and from assassination. assassination. Because it says it says here, following the assassination attempt. In 1981, the bodywork was furnished with bulletproof glazing. The custom-built unit based on the Mercedes-Benz cross-country vehicle subsequently accompanied the Holy Father on many of his journeys. There it is right there. And there it is right there. Sehr interessant. Oh, look at this. It's like a Busquets work. Uh, you know Crow? Crow, is it Crow's car? Yeah, it's designed by Crow. Uh... Yo, is it, was it his car? Crow? Uh, I don't know, he designed it. Kein Weg zu weit. Ich gebe dich nach Copacabana. That's my favorite Crow song, by the way. He's one of the only... There's a few German artists that I know, and Crow is one of the first ones that I learned about. Also, shout out 257ers, Ich und mein Holz. Shout out Lorenz Buffel, Johnny Depp. Those are my guys, back from 2017. I need to learn about more German music, by the way. Okay, and this one right here, Mercedes-Benz CLA street style designed by Crow. The musician Crow, famous as the rapper with the panda mask, transformed this CLA in a work of art. So he, he painted this, Crow. It looks very similar to the style of this artist called Busquets. You know who that is? He's an American artist. It has like a very similar style. But this one is Crow. Good job, bro. Good gemacht. This was the car of the guy who at the beginning said, I believe in the horse. Ah, the, the König Wilhelm? Kaiser Wilhelm. Yeah. Kaiser Wilhelm, I told you, bro. He got made a believer by not only Carl, but by... 
Beata. <laughs> Shout out, Beata. Hey, wait. Are there any people from the line of like Maybach, um, um, Daimler, Daimler Benz. Benz that still work here or like a part of the? Um, I'm not sure. Why. Okay. I want I want to meet you guys and interview I think you guys. They have a lot of des descendants. Yeah. Like maybe not direct descendants, but I'm sure some somebody like one of the descendants. Okay. Works if you're a descendant of uh, Daimler. Maybach or Benz, let's uh, go on a ride in a Mercedes and do an interview. <laughs> Any other famous person's car that we should check out? Yo, 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 yo. The Japanese emperor, uh, Hirohito, received this Pullman right here in 1935. So the, the actual Japanese emperor had this one. Okay, that's interesting. With Yokohama tires. <laughs> of course, bro. That's true, bro. We got the Japanese tires on the German car. Let's go. And this one was Kaiser Wilhelm's. Wilhelm's? Bro, Kaiser Wilhelm. And then... We didn't, we didn't do this one, did we? Uh, I think it was... It was an American actor. Um, was it... Bruce Willis? I have to look. No, it's okay. Nicholas Cage. Nicholas Cage. This Mercedes Benz 190 was first owned by Nicholas Cage. The California specification indicates where the Oscar winner spent most of his time in the vehicle. Hmm? Shout out Nicholas Cage, man. Hey, shout out California. It's my home state. Nicholas Cage right there. California dreaming, bro. This one, Daimler Motor Strassenwagen, 1892, was owned by the Sultan of Morocco. First person to buy a DMG motor car and the first monarch to own a gasoline engine automobile. That's a, actually a pretty cool fact. What about this one? Who's that? Astronaut David Randall Scott. Mercedes-Benz 190 SL, dream car for the, from the 1950s. First and only owner is a NASA astronaut, David Randolph Scott. I've actually never heard of that guy. Me neither. He was the seventh person to set foot on the moon. Do you know who the first person was? You know who the first person was? Yeah, uh, Did they teach you Armstrong. in school? Armstrong. Neil Armstrong, yeah. Maybe he was, was he German? I'm sure. Another California license plate. I meant like, was he German descendant maybe? Because if you guys didn't know, I think close to 50% of like Americans have German ancestry. Don't quote me on that, it might be 30, but a large percentage, I think the largest percentage of Americans have German ancestry, like to the, Second, third, fourth generation. I also have that. Konrad Audenhauser, or Adenauer. Aden. He was the Konrad Adenauer. first uh, German chancellor after the... The World War. Yeah. That's his car. Sick. You can go on the bus. Ah, okay. And what about this one? Well, that's... Uh, they sponsored Jurassic World, I think. Or Lost, Jurassic Park, Lost World. They sponsored the movie. Ah. It was featured. Mercedes sponsored yeah. the movie, there Jurassic were a lot Park. Of Mercedes uh, Benz is in the video. Uh, See, and the movie. It's advertisement. Yeah. And the modern day equivalent of movie advertisement is YouTube. <laughs> so let's do a deal. I'll get a Mercedes and I'll drive around the world. Boom, baby, let's go. No. Is that his car? Yeah, he was a German football player. He was like really, you know, Bastian Schweinsteiger. Yeah, yeah. He was like, he was like the best buddy of uh, Lukas uh, Schweinsteiger. So that's here is the auto von Lukas Padolski. Cool. 
this guy. Let's get up. So this is an SLK. SLK. Okay, nice. Hardy Kruger, is that a German guy? Das hier ist die Auto von Hardy Krüger. Mercedes Benz 500 SL. So in 1974 World Cup, Germany provided the the national teams with buses that look like that. And also Germany won the World Cup and it says here right here. Look, the fate of the original bus that was driven by the German national team in 1974 World Cup, Weltmeisterschaft, they don't know where it is. So if you know where the bus is, we need to find it. I'd like to like find that bus, because that'd be really cool. Why not? Should we walk on it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Hello. Yeah, I like little things like this, like Mercedes-Benz branded ashtrays, watches, spoons. Look at that, even makeup. Mercedes-Benz brand. Look at that, army knives, what's army knife? I think lighters, dude, lighters. Aschenbecher. And then, cooler figure. Is the 70s? There we go. We're getting to the future. We're stepping into the future. This is like the 80s going into the 90s. The Aufbruch. And they have world history all on the walls like Live Aid, Concert in London, Chernobyl, Mauerfall in 1909 in uh, Nelson Mandela, the invention of the internet, which is what you guys are using to watch this video, the fall of the Soviet Union. I know that I'm walking through and I'm not reading, but that's cool. Are these all the different types of Mercedes? Yes. Look at that right there. What's some of them? The A M L A G C L S L K S M L S A C L K. Conserving of resources. Okay, and then we're gonna walk down here and check these out. Oh, sorry. We're gonna walk down here and check these out. Dang, bro. Global Group. Is this? Are these all the brands that Mercedes owns? He used to own. Not. Not anymore. Well, Daimler. Daimler is like the umbrella corporation of everything. Yeah. And Daimler used to own uh, Chrysler. Look at that. These are brands that used to be or still are associated with Mercedes. Like. Mercedes still owns Smart Car. Not all. 90%. Check out that, dude. Mercedes AMG GT Concept Car. Wow. Okay, look. Even though that looks like legit, to me, it's almost a little bit too fancy for me. Love what it looks like, but the old timers with the sleek, style, I would like that. You know what I mean? Okay, would you rather drive this one or like one of the old timers, like 1930s? 1930s. Yeah? yeah. Just because the style? Yeah. I just said the it's same like, thing. It's like a forever timepiece. That's true. The old style is like, it's, it's, it's like, classic. It's indestructible. It's, it'll be there forever. And yeah. Yeah. That's what I would feel. Okay, anything else about these cars? This is electric? Yeah, this was like the first performance electric car of Mercedes, or of AMG basically. First performance electric car of AMG. What is AMG? Uh, Aufrecht Melchers plus Asbach. What like does that mean? Acronym. Uh, Aufrecht and Melchers was like the last name of uh, two guys. Okay. And Groß Asbach is a town in Germany, also like in the south of Germany. But what does AMG uh, do? AMG is like uh, the sports division of Mercedes. So ah. they, build like, they used to build race cars with Mercedes components and Mercedes cars. And then they later were bought up by Mercedes. And now it's like 
BMW M GmbH or Audi RS. So AMG is now a, a sports division of Mercedes. Yeah, it's a part of the company. It's a sister company, but it's like 100% owned by Mercedes. Uh, Mercedes, but okay, they're nice. still they're still in some way quite independent. I see. Look at the ceiling, bro. Okay, I'm in the bathroom. I just wanted to comment. I just wanted to comment on the color. I believe that somebody that works for the color department in uh, Mercedes had something to do with this bathroom. The lighting also affects the color, but it looks like it's like gradient orange to yellow. Just wanted to say that. It's a nice color. Okay, I also I wanted to comment on the coloring of the entire museum. It fits very well with the lighting and the windows. So when the light comes from outside and hits the colors on the ceilings and on the ground, it's really nice like gray blue tone. And I feel like it fits perfectly for like just the vibe of looking at the displays and all those types of things. Good job, Mercedes. Very good job. Check this, uh, Mercedes-Benz 170D. 230TE. C280, I like this one. This is a good one right there. What is that one? Station wagon. Station wagon, dude. The station wagon. Look at this. Yeah, like I said, the lighting from outside is perfect. Just lighting up the displays. He's a 240D taxi. It's a good look right there. Unimog. Unimog. I think that's the very first one. Oh, look at that, bro. 1949 Unimog 25 PS. This is the race car floor. And as you can see, they kind of made like a, a grandstand here with some TV monitors so people can learn about it. And they put them all on this track. And like Vincent was talking about, this is the silver arrows right there. Silver. Like I said before in the video, the uh, motor racing was a big part of the reputation of Mercedes-Benz worldwide. So before, during the early stages of the company, racing allowed them to create a big name. And then after World War II, it allowed them to like restore the reputation of the brand by putting their cars into Formula One and DTM because then people started seeing it in you know a sports positive light, which is very similar to a lot of companies around the world. Sports brings their name fame and also good vibes, if I can say that. Alright, let's walk out onto the floor and see all the cars. This is cool. Look at all these cars, man. That one's sick. This color. Okay, so, yeah, you can walk out onto this floor and then you can actually go up on the side and see from a different angle. Not only do they have the race cars, but they have the trucks that carry them. Anything of note in here? <laughs> uh, well, it's Mercedes-Benz race cars of like different eras, different racing series. And are the ones... Different Formula series, different touring car series, Le Mans. DTM, Formula One. Are the Indy ones car. at the front the, the most, uh, like... Uh, mm, well, the, the newest? Most, the newest, yeah. Okay, the newest are at the front. Yeah. Or, roughly. They're not all, like, chronological, but... Roughly rough, the newest. Rough. Check that out, bro. Mm. Oh, yeah, the old ones. These are the cool ones right here, in my opinion. Look at these. Yeah, so earliest racing cars on this side, all the way to, you know, common era racing over here. Look at these though. Dude, those are some nice looking design, you see? This is like timeless, in my opinion. Check out that one. Oh, and this one is sick. 
single cab, like one guy there. And then apparently, this one also was racing. Like these were also racing. Do they have any of like these older style racers available for people to like still drive? Um, Mercedes not still drive themselves, but there are events where Mercedes like gets the old cars out. For instance, like a Goodwood Festival of Speed. Okay. Or and they bring they like be, a professional driver to drive yeah, people around. Yeah, like a whole team and everything. Well, you, you can't as a passenger. It's only like one seat. Yeah, that's true. But. Uh, you can at least watch the cars drive by. Dude, look at this one with the long tail. That's here is 1909. 200 PS Rennwagen Blitzenbenz. What's your favorite one? You have a favorite one? Uh, I would say like the 1930s uh, Silver Arrows. Yeah, those look legit. Yeah. The one with the there's like a, ah, okay. a couple so, of old race cars with, with like straight eight compressor engines. So okay. It's like straight inline eight cylinder compressor engine. I don't even know what that is. It's like eight cylinders, like a V8 is like four here. Four okay, there. okay. And then inline is like eight inline. Okay, makes sense. So, and they have like this really cool sound with the supercharger. Dang! This is the end of the tour. Walking down this beautifully designed staircase that leads into the cafe and up on the wall are like cars that broke certain records like this one held the record for like the fastest car on a public road for a long time right yeah. how fast did it go 260 uh, 430 something kilometers and which, Königsegg broke it which is like 260 something miles per hour yeah so I wanted to say thank you Mercedes for a beautiful museum um, I showed a little bit, only like 10%. I probably only showed on this video like 5% of what you can see here. So if you liked what you see, please come visit this place for yourself because it's definitely worth it if you are at all interested in cars and also world history because you learn a lot. Check out this car. Are these also like concept cars? Like that one looks. All concept cars, yeah. Look at that one down there, that blue one. And now we're right back where we started with the futuristic elevators and then the, uh, the Mercedes Star. So, yeah, that's what it is. <laughs> Check out these concept cars right here. Beautiful colors. Like I said, we got the cafe here. And then... Alright, now we're in the Mercedes shop. Where they have a lot of Mercedes... Memorabilia. The last thing I'm gonna do before I leave is test out the Mercedes-Benz It smells like style and class. So now I'm gonna walk around in Stuttgart smelling like Mercedes.